Hey, welcome back. This is now 8.3 in Calc 2. We're going to go with trig integrals today, and we'll begin with some helpful identities for our journey. So I expect you to have simple identities like the, the uh, you know, the quotient and the inverse identities of trig function. I think that's what they were called. The, the things like um, uh, tan of x equals sine of x over cosine x. I'm, at this point, I'm kind of taking these type of identities for granted. Um, so hopefully you know all those, like cosecant x is equal to 1 all over um, sine of x. Okay, so I assume you know these types of identities. Um, then on top of that, I would expect you to know that the uh, Pythagorean identities, which I've sort of been already harping on um, throughout the semester. At least I hope I've introduced these. Maybe I'm thinking of another class, but here's the, the most fundamental sine squared plus cosine squared is one. Then if you divide everything by cosine squared, you get tan squared um, plus one equals um, secant squared. Then if you divide that first equation by um, sine squared, you get 1 plus cotan squared equals cosecant squared. From here, you should be able to kind of develop any associated <coughs> identity that you need. Note, you can replace any of the angles inside the functions. For example, um, sine squared plus cosine squared. You can have theta in there. You can also have theta over 2. You can have 3 theta. Um, any of those will work. Okay, and it'll still equal 1. Um, you should also be able to manipulate these things. For example, uh, getting your hands on an identity for tan squared, right? Tan squared, that must be secant squared minus 1. So any of those guys sh should be fair game. Uh, what we'll be needing in particular, upcoming, um, some less known identities that, which you need to have memorized. So I expect all these um, here to be memorized. Uh, things like sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine of 2 theta all over 2. Um, cosine squared theta then equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta all over 2. And the other one is the sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. So those three identities are definitely um, things you need to memorize. And again, you, you should be able to kind of manipulate them on uh, whenever you're needed to do so. You can also replace angles. So for example, sine squared of, uh, let's say, 5 theta would be equal to 1 minus cosine of 10 theta all over 2. You should be able to pull that off. Um, similarly, uh, sine of theta is equal to um, 2 sine of theta over 2 cosine of theta over 2. Um, I think the sine 2 theta formula, they usually call it the, the uh, double angle identity, but um, the way we use it is kind of you're halving the ang whatever angle is sitting right here. So on the other side, it's 2 theta divided by 2. And then for these first two identities, I think they usually call them half angle identities, but really when we use them, we're going to be doubling the angle. Okay. Okay. Um, so you definitely need those memorized. Um, you should have all the sort of generic derivatives memorized. For example, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. You should be able to handle most of the uh, integrals to, to an extent, right? I wouldn't expect you to have memorized the integral of cosecant. Um, that would be the negative ln of the absolute value of cosecant plus cotan. I, I, not necessarily that one, but you should have things memorized like uh, the integral of tangent, right? Even if you, it, worst case scenario, you do a u sub, um, but you, you should have that one memorized, okay? So all six of the derivatives, definitely fair game. I'll, I'll go ahead and write them out. You might want to pause the video and see if you too can write them all out, right? Good practice. Make flashcards is another good thing you can do.
definitely need those memorized. Um, then the integrals that you should have memorized. Just kind of follow along with the derivatives, plus you should have like tan x memorized on top of it. Again, you might want to pause the video and see if you can figure these out on your own. Of course, if you know the derivatives, you should be able to get these pretty easily. So I would expect all of these memorized for tests. Uh, what is this? Negative cosine x plus c, sine x plus c, tan x plus c, um, ln absolute value secant x plus c, this is ln absolute value sine x plus c, this would be negative cotan x plus c, this would be secant x plus c, this would be negative cosecant x plus c. Okay. All right. So you should have all of that kind of junk memorized. Set make flashcards if you need to. Whatever gets the job done is uh, where it's at. Okay. Um, this section, what they're going to do is kind of throw at you some uh, some integrals, of mixtures of sines and cosines, and then secants and uh, tangents, and uh, <laughs> it give you some some methods, some programs, basically for integrating them. Um, the first type will be uh, the form sine to the m x cosine to the n x dx. And uh, then they'll, they'll kind of categorize everything and show you a method for dealing with it as, as though you were a computer program. Um, in practice, though, usually I, I just kind of uh, play around with it until I get the answer. But this is a, a good way, I, I think, to introduce you to the subject. So um, anyways, First off, when uh, the m value is odd, okay, what you want to kind of do is make everything have an even power, right? So what you'll do is, is push back one uh, factor of sine and then convert everything into the same trig function using the Pythagorean identities and then do a u sub accordingly. So um, maybe we can do the example in the book here. Sure, so, so example one. We have uh, the integral of sine cubed x cosine to the fourth x dx. Okay, so I'm going to push uh, back one factor of sine. What I mean by push back is I'm going to kind of drag it to the back of the integral here. Okay, so it's it's basically just the commutative property. I'm switching um, functions around until I get it into the back, like like this. Okay, it's the same expression. It's just I factored out one of the sine x's and put it in the back. Um, now I can convert everything in here into terms of cosine x. Okay, so why would I want to do that? It's because then I'm going to let u equal cosine x, and then this will be the derivative of cosine x, right? So, um, or kind of the derivative of cosine x. So you need a negative, but we'll get there. But, so anyways, that's what I do. I'm going to convert sine squared using Pythagorean identities. That's, you know, if sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, then sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So I just replace this with 1 minus cosine squared x times cosine to the fourth x times sine x dx. And now I can go ahead and let u equal cosine. So u is cosine x. du will be negative sine x dx. Uh, if you'd rather dx is negative du all over sine x. Okay. So I can do my substitutions now. I have the integral of 1 minus u squared times u to the fourth times sine x times negative du all over sine x. Okay. 
um, remove your, your uh, X material. Um, you can factor the negative out. Be real careful if you distribute the negative. The, the negative won't go to 1 minus u squared and u to the fourth. If you distribute the negative, it'll become u squared minus 1 times u to the fourth. Okay? Um, most students would rather just bring the negative out front. Um, it's better safe than sorry if you're not sure. Um, so you have this expression. Then you have to distribute the u to the fourth. So you would get the negative of the integral of u to the fourth minus u to the sixth du. And then you get negative uh, power rule, u to the fifth over five minus u to the seven over seven, then plus c. And then go ahead and distribute the negative and back sub. So you get uh, cosine to the seventh power of x all over seven minus uh, cosine to the fifth power x all over five plus c. Okay. Um, that's kind of the, the same. The, you're going to have basically the same procedure um, uh, when the uh, cosine has an odd power. So part b, uh, n is odd. All right. So let's see if they give you a nice example here. Not really. Um, so if n is odd, let's, let's take a look at one of those examples. So you have the integral of something like cosine cubed. Uh, sin, let's, let's make it cosine to the fifth, just to be more annoying. Um, sine to the fourth x dx. So in this case, um, you're, you're going to push back one of the cosines and then convert everything in the sine. Okay, so you have cosine to the fourth, sine to the fourth x times cosine x dx. And now you're converting this into sine, and this will become your derivative. Okay. Or, yeah, you're converting everything into terms of sine, so I'm just making sure what I said before is consistent. Okay, so uh, if you have cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, then uh, cosine squared um, equals 1 minus sine squared. Okay. So uh, here we go. Um, cosine to the fourth. I can't directly do the um, Pythagorean identity. I have to rewrite it as cosine squared squared. Right. Then I could replace the cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, but then that's raised to the second power. But once I get everything in terms of sine, um, at least up here, then I can just go ahead and do my u sub. So u will be for, cos for, for sine this time. And then du, of course, is cosine x dx. Um, if you want, dx is du over cosine x. Okay. So this will equal the integral of 1 minus u squared squared times uh, u to the fourth times cosine x times du over cosine x. And then you get a nice little cancellation there. And uh, now your integral is 1 minus u squared squared times u to the fourth times du. You can FOIL out then. So you have to simplify all this before you can integrate. You can't integrate it as is. So first you have to FOIL. We'll get 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth times u to the fourth du. Then you have to distribute. Um, so you get the integral of u to the fourth minus 2u to the sixth plus u to the eighth du. And then integrate. So you get u to the fifth over 5 minus 2u to the seventh over 7 plus uh, u to the ninth over 9 plus c. You get a, a, a weird polynomial in terms of sine. Okay? There's really only so many functions out there that we, that we as students um, are familiar with. You know, there's sine functions, there's exponentials, there's logarithms, and uh, you know, then there's polynomials, rational functions, and radical functions. Uh, that's it. You know, and literally every other function that you can imagine is just going to be compositions of those things. It's going to be polynomial forms based off of those things. It's going to be rational functions based off those things or radical functions based off those things. Um, so, so, I mean, those are considered kind of elementary to us. 
and uh, it's interesting to kind of study things that uh, are there anything is there anything that's not like that you know is there anything in our universe that's not like that it's kind of like going from uh, rational numbers to irrational numbers. So you grow up thinking, you know, the, the most complicated number you find is a fraction, and then somebody hands you pi, and it's like, oh, what happened? You know, so so anyways, um, back subbing, I digress, back subbing, we get to uh, sine x in there. So this is kind of a polynomial in terms of sine, right? Sine to the fifth x all over five, minus two sine to the seventh x all over seven, plus um, sine, the ninth uh, power of sine, all over nine, plus c, okay? All right, um, the book kind of goes away from that pattern here, but it's the same idea with example two. I just want to touch upon that. Um, in the homework, they, they don't really beat this idea to death with all the, you know, m odd, n odd type problems. But they'll have like one of those, and then they'll start giving you sort of weird variations on that theme, like uh, example two. Okay. Um, but what you're doing is trying to, trying to get one factor of either sine or cosine, and then get everything else in terms of either sine or cosine, and uh, then do a U sub on either sine or cosine. So it's the same theme, basically. Um, okay. so, so what I'm gonna do is push back one factor of cosine and then try to get everything here at the front of the integral in terms of sine, right? And then I could do a u sub for sine, and uh, its derivative will be right here, okay? So um, I can replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared x, and then that will be all over um, square root sine x, and then I have the cosine x dx. Then I would say, just to go ahead and do your u sub, um, the, the book doesn't really do it that way. Um, they kind of don't do U subs, I guess. I don't know why. I'm just being fancy. Um, okay, so, so I'm going to do a U sub. I don't care what the book is doing. So du is cosine x dx. So dx is du over cosine x. I think they're trying to avoid all the extra work because um, because later on when you're when you're doing more math like you get into your uh, specific field of study um, the last thing you want to be worrying about is do I know how to integrate <laughs> you know you're gonna have enough balls in the air that you have to juggle if you're still having trouble integrating it, it's going to be a real real downer um, it, you're gonna be spending hours sitting at home trying to figure out integrals while your friends are out playing frisbee so um, you know, you want to master this stuff, uh, but uh, yeah. Anyways, um, one minus u squared all over the square root of u times uh, cosine x times du over cosine x. Uh, let's see, those cancel the integral. Now I'm going to kind of cut this up, right? So I get one over square root of u, which is u to the negative one half minus u squared over u to the one half, which is u to the four halves, minus one half, which is three halves, um, du. And then you could just do a power rule on it. So you'd end up with uh, u to the positive one half times two, minus u to the um, five halves times two fifths. And then uh, I gotta remind myself to evaluate once I do my back sub, um, so I get two, uh, square root sine x minus two-fifths um, sine x to the five-halves, and then I can finally evaluate from pi over six to pi over three. So plugging in pi over three, um, I get two times uh, the, geez, really, the, the square root of the square root of three all over two minus two-fifths times the square root of three all over two to the five-halves, and then minus, um, I guess this would be like this, right? Just going to my parentheses. Uh, minus plugging in pi over six, that's just two, so it would be two square root of one-half um, minus uh, two-fifths 
one half to the five halves. And then you're going to have to put that all that into your calculator because it's not looking like it's going to simplify in any nice way. Um, the book is saying 0 0.239. So I'll just go with what the book says. Okay, okay great. Um, the next kind of problem you may have sort of seen um, in your work in trig. Okay, so part C, this is what happens when um, N or M is uh, sort of even. And in these cases, you're going to use that, that formula. Um, sine of theta equals 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2, or cosine of theta is 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. Okay. Um, there's more annoying versions. And for those, if it's set up nicely enough, you can use Wallace's formula, which is given in there in the book. Uh, if you ever get a chance to read about Wallace's formula and how it's derived, I definitely advise it. Um, if you're going to be in an honors class or something, that would be something you could explore, but um, we'll leave it at that. Let's uh, take a look at, um, I don't know, did they give us an example here? Sure. Uh, example three. And they can make these really annoying. I've done some of these where it goes on and on, um, but this one doesn't look so bad. So we have cosine to the fourth x dx, and what I'm going to do is, re you know, I have first I can't d directly do a substitute. Well, yeah, I can. Okay, so I'm going to. These are, sorry, these are squares in here. That's what I get for chatting too much. Um, so I can't do a direct sub. I'm going to have to rewrite it as cosine squared squared dx. And then I could do a sub, right? I can use this formula um, and plop it in there. So I'll have uh, the integral of 1 plus cosine of 2 theta all over 2 squared. So you're going to have to do a little bit of foiling. And I guess this should be, they should all be x's. I apologize. I'm trying to get the eraser to work. Okay. Yeah. I called and they said you can get yours when I get mine. Um, so we have uh, x in here, and sorry, let's replace this with x and x. Okay, so I got to foil that thing. Um, if you square it, there's going to be a factor of one fourth, and then foiling the top there, um, you get one plus two cosine two x plus uh, cosine uh, squared two x dx. Um, you got to read, so one, they call these power reduction formulas for, for this reason sometimes. So these two formulas are also called power reduction formulas. Because um, what you're doing is, is taking that power cosine to the fourth and you're, you're kind of getting rid of it. So we're almost done, um, but this is still a problem. We still need to use a power reduction on that. So this would be one fourth. 1 plus 2 cosine 2x two plus, now replace that. Okay, so you get 1 plus cosine, you have to double the angle, 4x all over 2, dx. And then you could kind of, uh, I don't know, simplify it. I'm going to toss the 1 fourth back in the integral. Um, so I have 1 fourth plus cosine 2x two all over 2 plus, and I'm going to, butterfly this guy, so it would be 1 8 plus cosine when I, when I distribute the 1 fourth in as well. Try not to do too much at once. I know I'm kind of doing too much at once, but I've been around the block before. So um, then combine like terms, right? So I have a 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. That's really the same as 2 eighths plus 1 eighth, which is 3 eighths. Okay? plus cosine 2x all over 2, plus cosine 4x all over 8, dx. And then remember, when you're integrating things like cosine of, I don't know, um, mx dx, all you got to do is divide by this thing for your uh, u sub. Okay, So the integral of cosine is negative sine. Um, no, sorry, it's just sine, positive sine, mx, and then divided by m, 
Right, so it's just kind of the reverse of the chain rule. When you take derivatives, you have to multiply by m. When you integrate, because it's like an inverse, you just divide by m, okay? All right, so uh, anyways, the integral of these three guys, we have 3 eighths x um, plus sine of 2x over 2, but there's already a factor there, so that becomes 4 plus sine of 4x all over 4, but there's a factor of 8 there, so that'll become 32, and then plus your integration constant. Okay, so there's those kind of problems. Um, then they move ahead to secants and tans, which kind of work the same way as sines and cosines. It's just the thing that you're pushing back because of the derivatives. Um, so look at secant and tan. So you're either going to kind of need to push back a secant squared, or you're going to need to push back a secant tan. And again, you do that based off the powers of the particular functions in your integrals. Okay. And generally in practice, you know, you're not thinking of these formulas, but again, you know, them giving you kind of a program is not a bad way to learn. So um, first we'll look at the case when m is even and uh, see how that works. Let's see if they give us a nice little problem. Okay, so here, example five. Um, integral of secant to the fourth 3x tan cubed 3x dx. So um, to pull this off, we're going to need, uh, what are we going to need to do? Um, So we're, we're going to push back uh, a secant squared and then do a u sub on tan. Convert everything in here to tan. We have, okay, so, um, so it would be secant squared 3x tan cubed 3x, and you're pushing back the secant squared, which basically tells you that you're going to make your u sub tan. In other words, you need all of this material to be in terms of tan, right? which you can do because um, we have tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared. In other words, secant squared minus 1 is equal to tan squared. Okay, okay so I have then... Um, uh, whoops, I went the wrong way. Tan squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. Okay, so I just replaced this thing with tan squared 3x plus 1. That's this part of it. I guess I didn't need this other identity. I just, the first one does it. And then I have tan cubed 3x, and then the secant squared x dx. So you do your u sub on tan 3x. Uh, the differential is secant squared 3x dx. So dx will be du all over secant squared x, uh, secant squared 3x. Do, do you see the mistake I just made? <laughs> Chain rule. A lot of people do that. Okay. Um, so anyways, I have the integral now of u squared plus 1 times u cubed times secant squared x times du all over 3 secant squared 3x. You can factor out the um, one third. Uh, you, you're going to need to distribute this u cubed, so you get u the fifth plus u cubed du. And then you got to integrate, so you get uh, one third um, times u to the six over six plus u to the four all over four, and then plus c, and then you're back subbing. So one third, um, it'd be, let's distribute that, right? So the one eighteenth um, tan to the six, three x plus one twelfth tan to the fourth, three x plus c. Um, right, so just make sure that's what they got. Okay, so if uh, then we kind of have the other other situation, so let's look at example four. It's kind of a variation on this theme. You have the integral of tangent cubed x all over secant x, square root of secant x um, dx. Okay, so in this case, 
Jeez, you know. Um, somehow you need to get a secant tan pushed back. So you're going to kind of push back one of the tans, but if you do a U sub for secant, you're missing a secant. Okay, so you got to be a bit clever about this. Um, all right, so we have the tan squared x, and then we factored back a tan x. That's fine, I can do that. Um, what's not so necessarily easy to see is how I'm going to factor back a secant, right? Because right now I have the square root of secant x. But you can rewrite the square root of secant x as secant x um, to the negative 1, right? Uh, and then times secant x, and you want the exponents to add it to be one half, okay, at the end of the day. So you're going to make this uh, three halves, because three halves plus negative one is one half, and so you haven't really changed anything. Then you can factor back the secant to the negative one, so you have the integral of tan squared x all over secant uh, x to the three halves, and then you have tan x um, all over secant x to the negative first power dx. And then you could rewrite secant x um, with a positive coefficient. So um, you have tan squared x all over secant x to the 3 halves um, times tan x times secant x dx. And then you're just going to convert all this material up here into terms of, of secant, and then this will be your derivative of secant for your u sub, right? Okay, so first thing I need to get that tan squared rewritten. So remember, tan squared plus one equals secant squared. So tan squared must equal secant squared minus one, uh, right? So I have secant squared x minus one all over secant x to the three halves times tan x secant x dx. The book is trying to get you away from u subs because they're kind of time consuming if you think about it. Um, like, like I was saying before, you know, you don't want to be sitting around doing integrals while your friends are outside doing fris playing frisbee. So you got to think of ways to be able to do these quicker and the book is trying to push you in that direction. So if you're wondering why are they doing u subs, um, they kind of do it but they, they're not showing it. They're Kind of like, ooh, do this in your head or something. I don't know. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, what do we have now? Um, I need to do a u sub on secant x. I mean, I assume that's what the book is thinking. It's it's really not helpful to me, though, but um, I, I just can't let it go, can I? Um, so secant x tan x is the derivative. So dx is du all over secant x. Uh, tan x. I mean, you don't even have to solve for dx at this point because, look, du is just secant x tan x. That's sitting right here. You can just replace that with du, right? You can go through this is u squared minus 1 all over u to the 3 halves du. You don't have to do that cancellation part because you've got du sitting right there. It's only when you, you kind of don't exactly get that, that differential that you have to worry, right? So for cases like when you have a chain rule popping uh out of one third constant, then yeah, I usually do a u sub. But if I don't need to, you know, you don't, if you don't need to do a cancellation with everything, you know, kind of avoid it. Look for ways to make your integration process easier so your life becomes less painful in the long run. Uh, anyways, I'll continue to do the u subs because I am the teacher. Um, anyways, uh, uh, butterflying, um, use u to the 4 halves all over u to the 3 halves will just be u to the 1 half, and then minus u to the negative 3 halves, uh, of course, du. And then um, we can do power rules, so u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds minus u to the negative 3 halves plus 2 halves is negative 1 half times uh, negative 2, and then plus c, and then back sub, so 2 thirds um, tan x to the 3 halves, and it was tan 3x. No, it was tan x, the one before it was tan. It's secant. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So this would be secant x um, plus 2 um, all over the square root of secant x, if you wish, and then plus c. 
Okay. Um, then, you know, powers where, where tan is even. Okay, so this would be like, uh, I guess, part A, M is even. This would be part B. Um, uh, what is this? N is odd. Yeah. Sorry. Sort of lost my Roman numeral counting system here. Part C is when you have tan raised to an even power. Um, so like the integral of tan raised to the nth power where n is even. Okay. Um, so let's look at this. Generally what you want to do is just replace uh, one, of the one of the factors of tan. I know. Okay. So generally what you want to do is replace one of the one of the uh, squared factors with a secant squared, and then distribute and go go along your merry way. So let's make this one the uh, the video quiz. So this would be the, the third video quiz and video quiz set number four. Okay. So it's 8.3, example six. I just want to put that in my notes so I know I'm giving you guys credit. Um, all right, so example six. Um, we have a definite integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tan to the fourth x dx. And uh, right, so what do I do? I'm, I'm going to rewrite tan to the fourth as tan squared squared, right? So you basically have tan squared x times tan squared x. And then what you do is replace one of those factors with a, with a secant squared. So remember, tan squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. So therefore, tan squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. So I have the integral of secant squared x minus 1 times tan squared x dx. And then you're going to distribute. Okay. So you're going to get um, the integral of tan squared x secant squared x dx minus the integral of tan squared x dx. This one is a u sub on tan. Okay? Um, if you do a u sub on tan, uh, du will be secant squared. So you see that that whole second half of the, of the um, integral here, this is going to end up being your du part. Um, so if you wish, uh, then you could do dx is uh, du over secant squared, right? Um, but ultimately, that integral will devolve into uh, u squared du. Okay? So this, again, this red box is this guy right here. Right? So you could just do that substitution. du is that. You don't have to do the dx substitution. Okay, hope that makes sense. And then minus this other tan squared. So you have another tan uh, where the n value is even. So you just do another uh, secant squared minus 1 inside of there. So you get secant squared x minus 1 dx. So you end up with u cubed over 3. In other words, tan cubed x back subbing all over 3. Um, minus the integral of secant squared x dx plus the integral dx. And uh, those are easy ones, right? So tan cubed x all over 3 minus the integral of secant squared is just tan x, and then plus x, and then plus c. Okay. Just no big deal there. Uh, oh, we were supposed to evaluate that. Oops, screwed that one up. OK, so let me erase, if you don't mind. Sorry about that. This is the video quiz. I want to make sure everything. So I need to remind myself to evaluate. And we're going from 0 to pi over 4. OK, so tan of pi over 4 is 1. Tan of 0 is 0. So let's do that. So I have tan cubed of pi over 4. That's just 1 cubed. So I have 1 third minus tan of pi over 4 is 1 plus pi over 4 minus uh, 0. I plug in 0, you just get 0. So you get 1 third minus 3 thirds is minus 2 thirds plus pi over 4. And that should uh, do it. Right? Um, okay, so they, they kind of do the indefinite integral first, and then they evaluate it. Please don't do two separate integrals like they're doing. Just do the evaluation at the end. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so when everything is falling apart, um, it's kind of like an example seven. What you want to do is convert everything into sines and cosines and then hope you can finagle uh, one of the uh, previously introduced methods to, to uh, integrate. That's what example seven is about. Let's skip example seven now. Um, and look at this. This final section, I don't expect you to have memorized because of the formulas. Most people don't have those formulas memorized. I'll just show you one example, and then when you come across them in the homework, just use these formulas to do the, the simplification. Okay, so these are product to sum problems. Um, I'm just going to use uh, the one formula, the cosine mx, cosine nx equals uh, one half of cosine of m minus nx. Um, plus cosine of m plus n of x, um, like that. Okay, so one other identity you may need to have memorized in our original list, zipping way back here, um, is kind of the, the even odd identities. So recall cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta, and then sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta obscured the negative there, negative sine of theta. Okay, so you may need those memorized as well for these problems, um, but I'm not going to put these kind on the test, so you kind of don't need to worry too much about it. Anyways, let's look at example eight. Um, well, that's not my kind, right? I, I want to do one like the formula I'm using right now. So let me make my own example. Integral of cosine 2x cosine 6x dx um, we're not going to be able to integrate that using any of the things that they just showed you, but you can use this formula to rewrite it. So we'll have the integral of one half times cosine of m minus n. So you get negative 4x here, and then plus cosine of m plus n. So you get 8x there. And then each of those uh, terms is integrable, easily integrable, right? Um, first, let's rewrite cosine negative 4x before we get carried away. Um, so distributing the 1 half along the way, I get 1 half cosine, because it's even, of 4x, and then plus 1 half cosine of 8x dx. And then we kind of remember our simple rule for integrating these cosine functions. Instead of uh, when you differentiate, you multiply by 4. Here, you're going to be dividing by 4, right? So you're going to end up with 1 eighths sine of 4x plus 1 16th sine of 8x plus c. And that will do it for us. Um, as usual, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.